Today's scripture reading is Luke chapter 6, verse 38, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Give, and it will be given to you a good measure, press it down, shaken together, and run over. We pour it into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts, may they be found acceptable in thy sight, as you are our strength, our rock, and our redeemer, in whom we give our glory, thanks, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin the new year, we've been talking about some ways to develop our spiritual muscles, if you will. And some of you have come to me and said this has been a fun series as we maybe look at things that we haven't looked at in this way before. Today is one of those days as we try to work at getting our spiritual muscles into a better shape to remind us how we can learn and use in order to find our way to walk closer with Christ. Closer in 2024 than maybe what we did in 2023. Every new year lends this opportunity, doesn't it? It gives us an opportunity to talk about spiritual disciplines and talk about how those things affect our how-to world uh, to get all of this done. Reminding ourselves then that praying, listening, praising, worshiping, studying and getting wise counsel is where we have been. And this week, we add giving and sharing generously to that list. More than just the money that we give, please understand that this morning we're talking about giving and sharing everything with God and, of course, with one another. And doing so will help us to become closer to Christ. It reminds me of a time in a story when a pastor and a farmer who was from the church were talking in the farmer's barn one day. The pastor asked the farmer, Abe, if you got a hundred horses, would you give me fifty? Abe said, certainly. The pastor goes, but if you got a hundred cows, would you give me fifty? Abe said, yes. The master answered or asked, if you had two pigs, would you give me one? Abe did not answer immediately, but he silently thought before speaking until when he finally said, now cut that out, pastor, you know I only have two pigs. <laughs> Oh, that is how it is, isn't it? Generosity sounds very good in the contract, and, and many Christians picture themselves if we ever got a large windfall, an inheritance, or something like it, to give a future blessing of sort. However, it seems that we don't want to part with half the stuff that's ours now, especially in the moment. We would rather keep the pig, thank you very much, and especially when we're talking about getting closer to Christ, getting generous and being willing to share things with others has to be a priority. In fact, it just doesn't work without it. We have to do these things, it seems, because both giving and sharing matter. So let's take a closer look then at giving, especially when we add this generosity to it. 
Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Mount here in Luke 6, especially in verses 1 through 16, which start off our time here. Uh, Jesus is saying that Jesus is the Lord of all that is, uh, not ours to begin with, his. From the very beginning of time, right, God has been our creator, and we have been the ones called to caretake. Jesus is our Lord and our Savior, and, and we aren't. <laughs> He needs to be proving over and over again that we are the ones that need to be saved. And as a spirit, even in spite of ourselves sometimes, right, is the one who convicts us, forgives us, helps us, and sustains us as we try to do God's will for God's purpose. That's why in Luke 6, Jesus is saying that Jesus is Lord of all, and we are not. He has generously given to us. Are we as generous? But there's more. Because in Luke 6, Jesus is also saying that his blessings and woes are actually tied to our giving and our generosity. But we can't read and understand verse 38 without looking at verses 17 to 26, honestly. Unlike Matthew 5, Luke includes not only the blessings, but also the consequences of not doing the blessings in the first place. And again, it's all about this generosity standard. Blessed are the poor who hunger, who weep, who reject you because when Jesus comes back again, yours will be the kingdom. You will be satisfied. You will laugh and you will prove the naysayers wrong. But woe to you who are the naysayers. Woe to you who have enough to be rich, comfortable, well fed. And when people like you, because when Jesus comes back again, Yours won't be the kingdom. People will treat you like a false prophet, and your penalties will be being uncomfortable and hungry while you mourn and weep. The Sermon on the Mount is always a challenging piece of property in our text, but in Luke 6, Jesus is saying very clearly that the blessing and woes will be tied to directly what is in our hearts. Each one of us then has to honestly ask ourselves the hard question, the very question, are we generous givers? And if we are not ready for enough teaching or examples in this process, then Jesus takes this generous giving one more step outside of our comfort zones by saying simply that the same love Jesus once showed for us is now the new standard even for our enemies even for those we hate so in verses 27 through 31 of Luke 6 it's Jesus that's simply saying but to you who are listening I tell you Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Really, Jesus, all of that. If someone slaps you on the cheek, it continues. Turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks of you, in, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, don't demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do. Unto you. It sounds like here that Jesus is telling us to be generous in his love, too. Then from Luke 27 to 42, Jesus explains all the ramifications then of this new commandment, and we get a little bit of 1 Corinthians 13 wrapped up in there as well. Love everyone. Jesus will sort out the rest. Judge no one unless you want to be judged by the same standard that you're judging others. Ask for forgiveness. Receive forgiveness. Extend forgiveness. 
because that too will go a very long way. Beyond our salvation, it seems, Jesus never makes things easy. Giving generously, it seems, means also judging less and loving more. Jesus is Lord of it all. Our blessing and our woes are tied then to this generosity. And even our loving our enemies part is the new generosity giving standard. But that's just the giving side. We haven't even talked about generously sharing yet. And we're going to use 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 15, which we haven't used, if you're tracking, since last November in our stewardship series. But in that passage, we see three incredibly helpful sharing lessons. First, share cheerfully. God will bless. Second, share proportionately, like in Jesus said in Luke 6. And third, Share indescribably, just like Jesus did. First, sharing cheerfully. Second Corinthians 9, 7, and 8 reminds us every time you read it, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You see the correlation. We're blessed because we give cheerfully, but also blessed because we understand who's the one doing the giving. First, share cheerfully. God will bless. Generosity is not grudgingly giving. But then second, they are shared proportionally. Second Corinthians 9, 6 reminds us, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. Please note that whenever Paul starts off a section by saying remember this, it's probably a good idea to pay attention. Right? In 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and 11, this generous sharing continues. Now he who supplies the need for the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on some occasions, every occasion, to us. Your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Uh, sharing proportionally, then, is a second way to look at it. Like Jesus said in Luke 6, Paul here reminds us in the church that what we sow and share is what we will eventually reap. Which leads us, then, to sharing indescribably, just like Jesus did. Again, back to 2 Corinthians 6, this time verses 12 through 15. Paul explains to us that we, what we share here describably, the service we provide can change the world. This service then that you perform, Paul writes, generously sharing, is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in the many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity and sharing with them and with everyone else. And Paul concludes by saying, and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace that God has given to you. Thanks be to God for this undescribable, indescribable gift. Third, 
We need to share in this indescribability, just like Jesus did. Because the service we provide may just change the world. So in the Luke 6's generous giving and 2 Corinthians 9 generous sharing, you may be thinking, well, that should about cover everything. But it doesn't completely. Because if we haven't talked about what it means, how this giving and sharing can change our lives and the lives around us for the better. Going back to Jesus in Luke 6, this time verses 43 through 49, Jesus ends his sermon and the lesson with the two very important visual examples. The tree bearing good fruit and wise house built on a sure foundation. When it comes to living a generous life, this is how Jesus says it. No good tree bears good fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People cannot pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good person brings good things, and out of the good stored in their heart, this person brings evil things as well out of the evil stored in their heart. For what the mouth speaks, the heart will be full of. In fact, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And then do not do as I say. As for everyone who comes to me, Jesus continued, and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a person building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock so that when the flood came, struck, the torrent struck the house, it could not shake it because it was well built. But to the ones who hear my words and does not put them into practice. It's like a person who built a house on sandy soil without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Generous giving and generous sharing are important. But generous living, it seems, is a direct result of whether we are being generous or not, without any reservation. Like the good tree bearing good fruit and the wise built home on true rock, my hope is that in our everyday, ordinary living, we will be known for our extraordinary generosity as we give and share from cheerful hearts and willing spirits, because it seems that is the best way to live. In order to intensify our walk with Christ, giving and sharing generously are a must. We are blessed even in the craziness of this world. We are blessed to be a blessing to others. In fact, now more than ever, it's our generosity that has to make a difference in this world. This Christian church and our non-Christian world need to see us as generous Christians who will, with God's present and eternal kingdom in mind, give a chair natural. And don't worry. God will even bless that gift. 
mutuamente Gracious God, this series has challenged us in many ways, and maybe this morning we feel our hearts burdened more than lifted. Thank you for the opportunity to experience grace, truth, and love. Jesus the Christ, may our giving and sharing follow your generous teaching and example. No one, no one has ever given and shared more than you. And Holy Spirit, help us now to give and to share without restraint so that we may sow and reap, giving God all the honor, glory, and praise. We pray this in Jesus' name.